These are some of the biggest uh, supporters of the fossil fuel industry, the biggest enablers of the fossil fuel industry. Truthfully, the fossil fuel industry could not operate without their support. And we would be on a very, very different path when it comes to climate action without the role of the banks in this. Hello. Thank you so much for checking out Earth Care, the interview series that's dedicated to understanding the ways we can care for the earth and each other. I'm your host, Sarah Christie, and I'm on a mission to make climate change an approachable and not so overwhelming conversation for everyone. On this podcast, we meet climate heroes, activists, experts, entrepreneurs, and get their take on how we can help save the planet. And during this episode, we're learning how to do that at the bank. Michelle Marcus is the campus organizing lead of Banking on a Better Future. This is an organization that is demanding an end to all financial support for the fossil fuel industry. Now, without spoiling the information Michelle shares in the interview, the five major banks in Canada are key players in allowing the fossil fuel industry to survive, and they're able to do that through our business. Now that we're into April, it's Earth Month. April 22nd is Earth Day, and this year the theme is Invest in Our Planet, which is ultimately the goal of Banking on a Better Future. The press release that was shared with the theme announcement said, Investing in a green economy is the only path to a healthy, prosperous, and equitable future. Human influence is unequivocally to blame for the warming of the planet, and the sad truth is some forms of climate disruption will be felt for centuries to come. However, we must collectively push away from the dirty fossil fuel economy and old technologies of centuries past and redirect attention to creating a 21st century economy that restores the health of our planet, protects our species, and provides opportunities for all. This past year came with a really empowering learning experience for me because I took the first step in pulling my money out of fossil fuel investing and switched it over to sustainable accounts. I actually did a whole episode on this. If you want to hear more, it's called Should We Ask Where Our Money Is Truly Invested? But for someone who has historically run away from math, you know, just assume the bank will take care of everything for me. The big takeaway was that that way of thinking was essentially allowing destruction. There's just so much happening behind the scenes that you wouldn't know until you read the fine print of the fine print that screams red flags. But with the help from organizations like Banking on a Better Future, I was able to use their resources to stop running from math and investing and numbers and put the power back in my hands. So it can be done. What is fossil free investing? Where do we even start? And how bad is it if these banks continue to fund the fossil fuel industry? Let's get into it. Here it is my Earth Care conversation with Michelle Marcus. Thank you so much for being on EarthCare. What is the backstory to Banking on a Better Future? We are a group of young people across Canada that are committed to to demanding that the big five Canadian banks stop investing in fossil fuel projects and projects that violate Indigenous people's rights. We came together from uh, two different, two of the main arms of the youth climate movement, the fossil fuel divestment movement and the climate strike movement. Um, So I myself am from the fossil fuel divestment movement, having worked to get um, my university, the University of British Columbia to divest from fossil fuels. Um, And so we had uh, a few members from who had been working on that those campaigns across the country and a few members who had been working on organizing the massive climate strikes across the country come together, um, really recognizing that the big Canadian banks are uh, some of the the major actors that are uh, fueling the climate crisis and and delaying action. And we really do believe that young people have a huge role to play um, and a lot of power in getting the banks uh, to stop fueling climate destruction. Right. So on the website, there is a lot of talk about fossil free investing. Can you speak to what that means? Fossil free investing uh, traditionally refers to not investing stocks and bonds in fossil fuels. So normally when folks think about investment, they're thinking of of, uh, investing in in the stock market and the bond market. And this um, fossil free investing can take place at both the personal level and the institutional level. Uh, a lot of the really important work has happened at the institutional level. So as I mentioned, um, I've been part of this movement to get universities to stop investing their stock portfolios and from, from fossil fuels. And there's this um, global movement that has managed to get 
over $40 trillion worth of investments withdrawn from the fossil fuel industry. And so that's largely looking at um, universities, faith groups, foundations, businesses, et cetera, uh, getting them to take their money out. And I think the institutional side of this is really important because it's, you know, a huge amount of money that we can take away from the fossil fuel industry. And secondly, it sends a really large political message when you have these major institutions saying, no, we're not going to support such a dirty industry. On the other end, you can also personally divest your money from fossil fuels. And so you could, you know, you could go to your, your bank or your investment managers and ask them to move your stocks and bonds to a fossil free account. The problem with this is that if you're doing this through a bank, you don't actually have control over what they use your savings and checkings, checking account money for. And the big five Canadian banks are using that money, those deposits, to lend to some of the biggest fossil fuel projects across the country. And so that's why we're encouraging folks to, to, to actually close their accounts with the big five Canadian banks and move to credit unions. Wow, there's so much happening behind the scenes that we just don't know about. Now, you did say something, and, and again, at the, off the top, I mentioned uh, stocks investing is just not my strong suit. You said stock portfolio. What is a stock portfolio? Yeah, so generally folks will, will initially, you know, when you start putting money aside, you'll put in a savings account. But if you want to get a higher return, you can open, yeah, what's usually called an investment account, um, which would then invest in stocks, which is like investing in companies or bonds, which is investing in loans to those companies. You had mentioned the banks and the five major banks in Canada. What is their relationship with how strong and thriving the fossil fuel industry is in Canada right now as we record this? Yeah, so the big five Canadian banks, um, that's RBC, TD, uh, CIBC, Scotiabank, and BMO, just so we're clear on who we're talking about. These are some of the biggest uh, supporters of the fossil fuel industry, the biggest enablers of the fossil fuel industry. Uh, truthfully, the fossil fuel industry could not operate without their support, and we would be on a very, very different path when it comes to climate action um, without the role of the banks um, in this. So they, more specifically, the, together they've put over $900 billion into fossil fuel projects in the past six years, even though they've been making pledges and commitments, saying that they're committed to climate action and net zero and all of this greenwashing stuff. And they're also um, the main backers of key fossil fuel expansion projects that do not have consent from Indigenous peoples. So in particular, the Coastal Gas Link Pipeline, that is a project that is actively opposed by the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs and land defenders. I'm sure many of your viewers um, have seen the news of multiple times RCMP members coming in to forcibly remove these Indigenous people from their lands. And, and it's, you know, very, very violent arrests going in, you know, with police dogs and, and guns and very um, violent and colonial uh, behavior. And the banks are, are completely backing this. And right now, as we speak, uh, Coastal Gaslink has started drilling under the Wet'suwet'en, the sacred water of the Wet'suwet'en people. Um, this is the water that they've been used uh, using to drink for millennia. So the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs and land defenders are actively targeting RBC and the banks and calling them on them to stop funding colonial violence. And similarly, the banks are key backers of the Trans Mountain Pipeline, which used to be financed by the government, but the government handed it off to the banks. And the, the slave, members of the Slave of Tooth Nation are also actively calling on the banks to, to stop funding this project. Now, you mentioned greenwashing in there. What I discovered was, you know, through all of these major companies that have billions and billions of dollars, they also have a lot of money to make their sustainability reports sound great. If you read them, you probably won't because they're hunt not you specifically, but like most people aren't going to sit down and read, you know, uh, TD Canada's a sustainability report, it's over 100 pages. But if you do, it makes it sound like everything is great, and they're going to save the planet. So what is your advice for spotting those red flags and going, wait a second, there's actually a lot of greenwashing in between here? 
Yeah, I mean, our number one recommendation is just to get away from the big banks and move to credit unions. And the reason that we support, we encourage folks to move to credit unions because they're fundamentally different from the banks. They're actually owned by their members rather than being owned by shareholders that are, you know, just wanting to get profit out of customers. So credit unions, their purpose is actually to serve members and uh, instead of uh, prioritizing profits. So I'm obviously, I'm going to trust um, an institution that is not profit oriented a lot more than an institution that is um, that we know their goal is to maximize profits. There's some other benefits to credit unions as well. Um, they're locally rooted. So their a goal is really to support the local economy um, rather than you know just extracting wealth from all around the world. Um, and they usually they do not lend to fossil fuels. They usually focus on lending to projects that are more environmentally and socially sustainable. And they actually um, often do have even better rates, um, better returns than than banks do, uh, because their goal is to get put money back into the pockets of their members rather than extracting it for shareholders. It's good to know that those options exist because, you know, there are a lot of roadblocks out there and, you know, it's so easy for us and our busy schedules to just trust the major companies that when, you know, they've been doing it for so long, if it's not broke, don't fix it to a blind eye, it's not broke. But when we have these conversations, we learn that it actually is. So what are, you know, some of the major environmental and, and social benefits to, divesting our money from the fossil fuel industry, because I think it's important to really understand those to understand why we should be taking these steps. Yeah, first of all, just back to your point, I, I'm always skeptical of large corporations, because I know that their that their goal is to, to maximize profits. So I think, yeah, that would be my number one tip for, for avoiding, uh, for, for avoiding greenwashing, as well as also following accounts of like organizations like yours that are helping to you know spread the word about what is true and what's not um because it's because there are lots of environmental organizations out that are really picking picking apart the truth from from the lies uh, but in terms of benefits uh, you know moving moving our money um out of fossil fuels yeah i think you know the fossil fuel industry is a key driver of climate change um they are you know we're currently on on a track for fossil fuel production to like massively outpace where it needs to be if we're going to stay within a livable climate um, and have you know just like healthy communities um, for folks to live in. But beyond that, we also have opportunities to um, support uh, support investments that actually have a benefit towards our communities and create positive social and environmental good. That's why I really uh, do encourage people to put their money's, money in credit unions because credit unions focus on redistributing that wealth to the local community. So for example, um, I live in Vancouver and we have Van City Credit Union, which is an amazing credit union because they, they prioritize investing in affordable housing and um, locally owned clean energy projects and supporting social enterprises. Um, those are the things that we should be investing in. I know it can be difficult for individuals to find um, these types of, you know, positive, um, socially beneficial investments, but um, they do exist. They are, um, they are scarce, but there are things called community bonds where uh, a nonprofit institution raises money for a project and um, any individual can, can put money into that usually maybe around like five thousand um, dollars would be the starting point or sometimes it's even as low as one thousand uh, dollars so for example me and my family have invested in a couple of these community bonds um, one is uh, soul share which is they're um, supporting uh, businesses and residents in bc to build um, solar inst installations oh cool um, and, yeah 
on their on their homes. Another is Sketch, um, which is a project in Toronto that is is providing like arts uh, programming to marginalized youth. That's so great that you did that with your family as well. And it's just so great to know that these options exist because truly it's intimidating to go back to the drawing board and it's intimidating to change in any way, but especially outside of your comfort zone. So I do appreciate all of the work that you and the team at Banking on a Better Future are doing and, and all of the resources that you're providing because I can speak for myself. I will definitely be visiting the website time and time again to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we we actually have a pledge on our website. So um, we're trying to get as many young people as possible to pledge to close their accounts with the banks and move to a credit union. Um, because, you know, if, if I just, you know, close my account with the bank and move to a credit union, you know, that feels great for my conscience, but it's not really going to do anything to to pressure the banks to change their lending decisions. But we believe if we can get tens of thousands of young people to all commit and say, you know, we're not going to bank with you unless you stop financing these destructive projects, we really, really do believe that that could that could play a huge role in getting them to change their decisions because we know that the banks care very much about recruiting young customers because otherwise they're going to lose a generation of customers. So um, yeah, I really encourage folks to sign the pledge on our website. And we have lots of resources there as well about how to switch. Absolutely. Michelle Marcus, thank you so much for being on Earth Care. It was so great to chat with you. You too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for checking out that episode of Earth Care and letting this podcast be a part of your day. Since you made it this far, here's a little sneak peek into the conversation we're having next week. As like I stay up late and like nerding out on this stuff, you kind of realize it's like, oh, some of this stuff, it's not fully solved at all, but there are some of the stuff in the early steps are solved. And so, you know, I guess it just, if it's a tractable problem and we have the means to do our part for it, it's kind of irresponsible of us to not do it, I guess is, is our take on it. Until then, we can also connect online at Earth Care Show on Instagram and TikTok. Head there to give those accounts a follow. And hey, if you have time, leave a review, message me with a review. I'd love to know what's on your mind, what's been clicking with you, and what topic you'd like to learn more about. You can also write to me on the website, earthcareshow.com. I'm your host, Sarah Christie, and the goal of this podcast is to get us talking about climate change. So let's chat.